Today is the Josh Build Stuff Halloween special. Really? It is. Doesn't look very spooky around here. Maybe not, but it is a scary video because today's video is different and change is scary. Wow, seemed like a lot of effort to get to a joke that wasn't that funny. That might as well be the motto of this channel. What's going on everybody? I'm Josh, this is Josh Builds Stuff, and as I mentioned earlier, today's video will be a little different. Usually we would spend the majority of a video talking about one specific Lego set, however, there aren't a lot of new Lego sets out right now, and so I thought I would do something a little different. But we will be talking about a build, though it's not Lego related, but it does involve these couple of droids here. I also thought this would be a good opportunity to show off my office space, or I guess you could call it a studio space, where I make these videos because, as you can see, I've got some new scenery behind me. There's actually been a lot going on around here. One of those things is that we've moved, or are mostly moved at this point, and so that means I got some of my old stuff back and it's now in this house. I also thought this would be a good opportunity to show the current state of my Lego collection since I've just had to move everything from one house to another, but I'll be honest, most of it's not actually in this house, though I'll update you more on that in a minute. And you also may have noticed that I got a haircut, which was long overdue, but you know, the whole quarantine thing made it a little difficult to do that. But don't worry, I did it safely. This haircut was done by my wife on a bar stool in the backyard, which actually kind of sounds like a country song. On a bar stool in a backyard with a barbecue, my baby by my side, a big old truck player and Billy Ray Cyrus. Does he still do country music? I don't know. I couldn't think of another B word. Anyway, let's talk about another B word, which is a build. And it's not a Lego build, but it is kind of in line with the subject of today's video because these two droids here help me control the space in which I am currently standing. So to some, these may look like ordinary R2-D2 and BB-8 boppets. Yes, these are boppets, the little toy with the twist it, spin it, bop it buttons on them. However, I have modified these boppets to do something special. You see, every morning when I walk into my office to start my day, I come over and I tap the head of R2-D2 and he turns on the lights on the shelves behind me, at least the lights on the lower level of those shelves. However, BB-8 comes in handy because I use him to turn on the lights on the upper level of those shelves. So you may be wondering, how is this a build? Well, obviously these bop -It toys were not designed to turn on Ikea lights, but I made some personal modifications and did some soldering, which I'm not very good at, and I made these little bop -Its into remotes for my lights. I will try to give you a very brief rundown on the process involved in turning these droids into remote controls, and really it was quite simple, and if it would have been more complicated, I probably wouldn't have attempted it myself. Now, I mentioned that these lights behind me are IKEA lights, and IKEA sells little remotes that look something like this when they're still fully assembled, and those remotes can be hooked up to lights like I have here. These remotes are very simple. They have a single button on them and they run on two AAA batteries. Conveniently, that's the same as these droids. They have a single button on each of them and they run on two AAA batteries. And so if we open up these little remotes, you can see that the only real mechanics of it are a single little chipboard. And on the center of that chipboard, is a single little button. And so all I really had to do was solder the two little battery connection points of this board to the battery connections on the boppet. And then there's a single button on this board. So I had to solder the couple of little button connection points on the board to the button wires coming out of the boppet unit. And then pushing the boppet button would send the same signal of pushing this little board's button and that would turn on and off the lights. I did that same process for both droids and I've actually had to do it multiple times for each droid because like I said earlier, I'm not very good at soldering and so I ruined a couple of boards and a couple of droids, but now they are working as expected and they live right here on my shelves next to a couple of other droids. And every morning I walk in my office, push my droids buttons and turn on my lights and get to work. Now let's get to the office tour portion of this video, starting with 
the shelves behind me. This is where I like to display a lot of my stuff on these shelves, which I've had for a very long time. These are actually uh, Billy bookcase shelves from Ikea, though they no longer sell them in this dark brown color, which is a shame because I can't actually expand what I have here. Now, usually I have a lot more Lego displayed up here, but I will show you the state of my collection right now. It's kind of in ruins and chaos, but that's why I only have a few of my favorite sets on display right now. So I'll kind of look around at different items on the shelves, but I'm not going to talk about every single item. So if you see something that you're curious about, most things on the shelves have some level of significance. So ask me in a comment down below and I will try to elaborate. So let's start up top. I've got an Optimus Prime figure up there, the uh, Lego Ideas Saturn V kind of split between multiple cabinets up there. That's one of my favorite sets that's come out in the past couple of years. There are a bunch of lightsabers on these shelves. There is the Apollo Lunar Lander up there, as well as a Stormtrooper, which you may notice is a common theme throughout these shelves. Uh, starting over here, I've got some more vintage books. That may also be another theme that you see throughout these shelves. Some of my droids up there hanging out together. I know I made a big deal that Dio would not make a place on my shelves, and yet here he is because I think he looks good between Wally -E and BB-8 over there. You can also see another lightsaber there, a little Haunted Mansion Funko Pop there, and an ultrasound of one of my children. I think that's my second baby, but who knows, they all look about the same at that age. Coming down to the next shelf here, I've got an abacus back there that was a gift from my wife, along with the three Star Wars helmets that came out earlier this year. And I'm excited because I know we're at least getting a Darth Vader helmet next year, and maybe a couple others, I'm not sure. Uh, back there is a K-Bar knife that my brother gave me from the Marines. He was in the Marines until very recently. There's a yearbook from my uh, high school, so look me up if you're that curious about me. Moving on down, I know it's getting a little darker as we get lower down, but you can see in the back corner hiding there, that's one of the few new LEGO sets that I actually have on display. That's the new NES, and I just couldn't bring myself to take it apart or put it in a bag in storage, so it found a place on my shelves. Also back there, I've got the Star Speeder from the Star Tours ride at Disney World. And if I'm being honest, I wish that there were so many more versions of toys that represented pieces of Disney rides. I know that's a little weird. I'm a big fan of Disney. I'm a really big fan of Disney parks. And so I would love anything that kind of mimics uh, Disney parks rides merchandise, if that makes sense. You can also see that I've got a lot of droids here. That BB-8 is actually a sipper cup from Disney World as well. That's one of my favorite and oldest lightsabers back there. It is actually a lightsaber from a website called parksabers.com. I don't know if they still are around or if they still sell that lightsaber specifically. Uh, here are the lighting remotes that I showed off earlier in the video. And then we've got the Sphero droids there as well. Um, another common theme that you'll see is Jules Verne stuff. I love Jules Verne books, specifically 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and other adventure books. So that's a really cool collection of seven novels there. Down here are a couple of uh, Star Wars figures from Legoland that were sent to me from my friend Rob. So shout out to Rob. Also around here, we've got the Stormtrooper. Uh, I think that's set 8008, the Technic figure. I actually uh, kind of made a video about him a long time ago, but uh, it's not really worth watching. Uh, there's a picture of my wife down there. Shout out to her. Uh, in front here is my uh, lightsaber from Galaxy's Edge, the uh, Star Wars themed land in Disney World. Uh, this is the lightsaber that I built myself at Savi's when I was able to go before this whole pandemic thing went down. And you can also see I've got an assortment of kyber crystals down there. I think inside it right now there is a green kyber crystal, and so I have five in total, and the only one I'm missing is yellow, and I guess black, but that's also red. So, for those who actually care about Galaxy's Edge kyber crystals. Continuing along here, there's a Lamborghini poly bag. Here is a little builder Lego minifigure who's actually kind of special to me because my uh, oldest son picked that out and said, that's you, Dad, so I had to buy this at a little secondhand Lego shop because he thinks of me as someone who builds things, which is funny because I don't build things for my job, but I guess I do in my spare time, uh, so that fits, and like I said, that's pretty special to me. There's Darth Vader's lightsaber in the back, there's some coding books here in the front, that's what I actually do for my day job, though I don't actually do Swift, and I've never actually read that book, nor have I read most of the books on these shelves. 
Uh, but I did read this book, The Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Iger, the former CEO of Walt Disney World. It is actually a very good book, and I would recommend it to a lot of people. Or everyone, I guess. Uh, no, a lot of people. If you like Disney World, you would like that book. Also, I don't know why I went straight across on my shelves instead of going up from that last one, but this is the next shelf. I've got a bunch of Rubik's Cubes back there because I got really into solving Rubik's Cubes for a little while there, and then I got into collecting Rubik's Cubes, and if people know that you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, they just want to send you Rubik's Cubes. So I've got some in all sizes back there, some little electronic games, there's a couple of Disney World Rubik's Cubes back there, some big ones, some small ones, uh, some the size of your head. But, uh, so now I just kind of have a collection of them on my shelves. I've also got some vintage Game Boys here, as well as a Nintendo DS back there. I like seeing kind of the progression of technology over time. There's me and my wife on our wedding day. Uh, here's a Funko Wampa. I do not own many Funkos, and I did not buy this one myself. This one's actually very special to me, because it was given to me by my friend Dave, who got a shout out in my last video. So, hey, my buddy Dave, and thanks for the Wampa. That actually has more significance to it than I can explain right now, but um, that's why it's on my shelves. I've also got a couple of Bumblebee Transformers there. I really like the 77 Camaro and would love to own one, but for now I just own one in tiny Transformers form. Also, there is the thermal detonator, I think that's what it is, from the back of a Stormtrooper, but he doesn't wear it on his belt because that would hinder his ability to lean against the wall, which is his favorite thing to do most days. Moving on up, here are some other Disney stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. There's another baby picture. I think that may be my first kid. I don't know, they both came out looking very similar when they were that size. So I think that's my first kid. Um, here's an all-white Mickey Mouse that has some significance to me. Some Lego sharks, including the big new Great White. I've got a few more Haunted Mansion Funko Pops hanging around here, and I do not collect those, but I like Disney stuff, so I keep being more and more tempted to buy more Disney-themed Funkos, though I try very hard not to. Uh, here's another Transformer, though you may just think he's an ordinary old truck with some weird bits and bobs sticking out the bottom of him. Uh, that's Ratchet. I, I liked him from the first Transformers movie, so uh, he gets to hang out on my shelves. Another Galaxy's Edge Stormtrooper, there's Buzz Lightyear, a very old toy that I've had for a very long time. Let's continue on a weird direction around the shelves and head to my, uh, nautical, nautical shelf. Nautilus shelf. Under the Sea shelf. So this shelf, like a couple others, has a kind of rough theme. The theme here is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which I have a more modern copy of here on the left side and a very old copy of here in the back. This copy is from 1885. It cost a pretty penny at a bookstore that I found in Austin a few years ago, but this is printed in original French. It has some beautiful illustrations on the inside, and it is one of the favorite pieces that I currently own in my collection. And so along those lines, I thought it would be fitting to display it here with a cool 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea comic book that I found a few years ago, the Lego Ship in a Bottle, which I really love and should always have a place on my shelves. There is a big old shell display piece. Here's an octopus that kind of fits the theme, but we also got him at a gift shop somewhere that we visited. Here's a BB-8 uh, in pumpkin form, which I guess fits the season right now, but he's uh, special to me. I do not collect pins from Disney World, but... I actually carved a BB-8 pumpkin a few years ago that I will put a picture of in here. And so when I saw that they made a little BB-8 pumpkin pin, I just had to have that to uh, remember my uh, BB-8 pumpkin carving. Moving on up, this is my brown shelf, or so that's what I'll call it, because it has some brown stuff on it. I don't know, more vintage books there. Uh, up top are actually a couple of groomsmen gifts that I got a few years ago from a couple of my friend's weddings. This little boutonniere, I think that's what it's called, uh, mine had a Chewbacca on it. Some other friends had some different Star Wars minifigures on them. Scrolling across here, we've got Thor standing there in front of Mjolnir. That's the actual Mjolnir hammer, so I wouldn't attempt to pick that up if I were you. There's a little fake Mjolnir hammer, and then a couple of glasses up there. I also like Thor stuff. He's uh, probably my favorite uh, Marvel superhero, I would say, but um, I at least like Thor's stuff. So that's why I have a few Thor-themed items there. And moving across to the final themed shelf worth talking about. This one kind of has a rough Disney theme. I used to have the micro Disney castle that I made a video about a while ago on here as well. That is also somewhere in storage. But I've got my Mickey Mouse Club hat that I got for a recent video. Another star speeder here. I think that's the 3000 or the 1000. I don't remember the difference between them. There's a little monorail, a little Darth Maul that was a gift from uh, my buddy Dave from a long time ago. There's a Coca-Cola bottle from Galaxy's Edge as well. There's a little... 
uh, Biggs figure, which I think was also a gift from Lewis, who also got a shout out in a previous video. So shout out to Lewis. And there's uh, my droid Ron, which I also built at Walt Disney World. Can you see a theme here? That's the uh, rocket ship from uh, Disneyland, the original Tomorrowland, I think it was. So uh, that's roughly my Disney shelf. And that's roughly all of my shelves together. So like I said, uh, a lot of things on there that have a lot of significance to me. And so if you have questions about anything that I didn't mention or want more details on anything, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below and I will be happy to answer. But there is actually more to my office than this one wall. If I turn this way, you can see some curtains where I have actually filmed some videos in front of before. And then that way is uh, what I'm looking at while I'm making a video such as this one and a big messy closet behind me. We'll take a closer look over there. And if we look this direction, uh, it also looks familiar as a backdrop that I have filmed videos in front of before. So I've really just been spinning in circles in this room filming videos from different angles trying to get something interesting looking. But now that I have my shelves here, I will probably most of the time film in front of those. So that is a full 360 of the room. There's the doors that lead to the rest of the house, which you will not be getting a tour of right now or probably ever. Um, so this also doubles as my office because I work from home full time and did so even before the pandemic hit. So I need a decent work setup. So that is my work desk slash my editing desk for making videos like this one. I also recently wanted some new wall art and I believe this is a part of the Galaxy's Edge collection at Target. They made these three new posters and so I thought, those would look decent on my walls, though I'm still having trouble finding uh, poster frames for posters in these weird sizes. So um, those are still to come at some point. And then, of course, I have Darth Vader and the custom Stormtrooper Lego art that I showed off in a previous video hanging next to each other there. And I think that is a pretty nice work environment, if I do say so myself. And then turning back to the left, there's a big bin full of uh, video stuff where I keep my video making stuff when I'm not making videos. Uh, we can look at this closet, which right now is being used as a big, ugly storage space. Down here, I've got some other Marvel posters that I have had on display previously, but right now they are serving as a baby gate to keep my children away from, uh, I don't know, the UCS Millennium Falcon that came out a few years ago and is now relegated to sitting on a shelf in my closet and not being displayed prominently as it should be, which is a darn shame. But like I said, I'm still in the process of moving, so that guy will eventually find a nice home, uh, but right now he is kind of stuck in the closet. Now, for those who love displaying Lego, this next part may make you a little sad because I really don't have the room to display a lot of Lego right now and had to take down some of the sets that I even had on display, such as the Black Seas Barracuda that I like so much. And there's some Mario sets down there um, and they are all stuffed into bags and stuffed into boxes. Here's a box of unbuilt sets that I don't really know what to do with right now, but those guys are um, probably going to be built in the future or be saved to sell later. There's the Death Star, which was my previous favorite set before maybe the Falcon came along. Um, but that guy has not hit a good display spot for quite some time. So he's actually gathering a lot of dust and has been doing so for some time. Like I said, if you're a big Lego Star Wars fan, that may make you sad. Over here are a few more cardboard boxes full of, you guessed it, more Lego. There's the nose of an X-Wing sticking out there. I think that's Kylo Ren's shuttle there. Um, down here, more stuff. Hey, there's that new uh, 501st battle pack that people were trying so hard to get. Um, this is actually how I uh, store my sets. I will stick them in big plastic bags and then I will shove those plastic bags into boxes. It at least keeps all the pieces of one set together if I do decide to put them back together someday. Here are some masks that my Stormtrooper likes to wear or Baby Yoda likes to wear when they appear in the background of some videos. There's another uh, box full of Lego sets. I think that's the Iron Man helmet sitting there in front. Um, and I've got, I don't know, about uh, six or seven large plastic tote bins full of more Lego that are actually in a storage unit right now that aren't here. The funny thing is, among my entire collection, I think there are like five sets or so that do not fit in plastic bags. That's one of them, the Lego Cloud City set. I got that on sale a few years ago after um, it had already been out for a while, so I didn't bother making a video on that. There's the UCS A-Wing, which just came out a few years ago or earlier this year. I don't remember when it was. This year has been going on for so long. Uh, there's the UCS Slave 1, which is one of my all-time favorite sets, and yet it sits in a bag in my closet. 
There's a Tantive IV from, I think, last year? And that's another set that is too big to fit in any plastic bags that I can find, so he just sits there loosely hoping that not too many pieces fall off of him. Uh, and in that same vein is the Helicarrier from a few years ago, way too long to fit in any bag that I can find. And there is the uh, Technic Lamborghini Sion, which is one of my favorite new sets, and yet uh, it's a real shame that it sits in the top of my closet right now, which is a little sad. Um, so, like I said, that is the sad kind of state of a lot of my collection right now. Um, I'll also throw in a few pictures of the rest of my collection, which is currently sitting in a storage unit. I have stored my LEGO collection in bags and in bins for quite some time, so I'm used to doing it this way, and at least I know I can get to them quickly if I need to, if I want to do a comparison or something like that. But it is a little sad to see these big, beautiful sets, which I wish I had room to display right now, just kind of sitting in closets where nobody can see them but me, but it wouldn't matter that much anyway because no one can come over during this coronavirus time anyway, so we might as well all just keep our Millennium Falcons in our closet. And if that isn't enough of a euphemism for 2020, I don't know what is. Well, that's all for the tour for now, and I hope you enjoyed it. I promise I will show off more of my complete LEGO collection once I get many of the bins that are currently in storage, out of storage. I do hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little different than usual, but like I said, a lot's been changing around here and there aren't a whole lot of new LEGO sets out right now for me to review, so I thought it was a good time to do something like this. Also, if you are new to this channel, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you're enjoying yourself while you're here, but along those lines, we are quickly approaching 8,000 subscribers, and so I want to do another video a little like this, but a Q&A video where you can ask me some questions about, I don't know, my life, my office, my setup, the Stormtrooper behind me, anything, and I will answer those in a separate video. So be sure to send me any questions that you may have in the comments below or message me on Twitter or Instagram, but don't forget to follow me there first. And if you don't send me questions, I'm still going to make the video, but I'll have to make up the questions myself, and trust me, they're gonna be weird. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And that was the Josh Build Stuff Halloween Special. Really? Yes. Didn't seem that spooky. Maybe not, but today's video was very spooky because it's different and change is scary. Wow. That seemed like a lot of effort to get to a joke that wasn't that funny the first time, and yet we're revisiting it. That may as well be the motto of this channel. <laughs>